Let us pray. Our blessed God and our Heavenly Father, we come before thee this evening and ask now for thy grace, draw near us, O Lord. Bless us in Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we turn to Psalm 139 this evening. Hear the word of God. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my, lie down, and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also! Are thy thoughts unto me, O God? How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord? that hate thee, and am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. May the Lord bless that reading of his holy word. The announcements this evening. Tuesday at 8 in the evening, we have a fellowship and prayer meeting. Uh, 7.30 on Wednesday, uh, our Bible study with Tabernacle Cardiff on YouTube. Friday, uh, fellowship and prayer meeting uh, at 8 in the evening. Then Saturday, 11 o'clock in the morning, our Persian meeting. And next Lord's Day, 9.30 in the morning, Sunday School on YouTube. 10.30 in the morning, uh, service at Pennawine Road, uh, but also on YouTube. 3.30, Welsh service with Capital Rath. And uh, 6 o'clock in the evening, our evening service. A tabernacle Cardiff. So one meeting in our church buildings at 10.30 in the morning but all those meetings on YouTube. God willing and we trust with God's blessing. Well we sing a hymn and the hymn is 327, hymn 327. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing 
is worth. Hymn 327. come before the Lord once again. Our Father and our God, we come before Thee. Thou art the eternal God and also our Heavenly Father. And through Christ we come to Thee as Father. And, O Lord, we know Thee and are known of Thee. O Lord, we pray now this evening we might know that nearness and intimacy. We might know the hand of God upon us, we pray. We know the blessing of God, the grace of God. Lord, we are thy children. Thou art our God and our Father. O Lord, we pray. We might know that uh, family togetherness this evening as we come together and also our union in Christ. He is the head and we are the body. And we meet as the Lord's people and we are together in Christ, this great spiritual reality for which we thank, O Lord. So, Lord, we pray now, uh, continue with us through this evening hour and beyond after the benediction. We pray as we go uh, our ways of the various things of our life, and the various duties and the week which lies ahead of us. Lord, continue with us. May thy hand be upon us. And, Lord, we pray for those moments where the hand of God presses upon us. Uh, with grace and mercy. O oh Lord, we pray for this nearness. 
Yeah, this world is a dark world and it is a lonely world. And Lord, our souls are, are lost. Our Lord, are drift without Thee. And even though we know Thee in our heart as the Lord's people, uh, we can know this distance at times and how we hate it, O oh Lord. And we wish to be near. Lord, therefore be near us now. And we do think and consider those who know no nearness and are far from God. O oh Lord, have mercy upon them. At the moment they console themselves uh, in the things of the world, uh, these temporal things, and of so limited uh, advantage. And, and the advantage they, they give, or the pleasure they might give, is a corrupting one or at the very most it is limited and so shallow compared with the deep things of God. We pray we might know the deep things of God now this evening. Come in thy mighty power upon the church and upon us, O Lord. We pray for our church here and other churches as we meet across the lands on this evening hour, in this evening hour, and other churches across the world at different times throughout this day, O Lord. Be with us and bless us and there might be uh, places where there is a visitation uh, a breaking upon a falling upon the Holy Spirit may fall upon the people of God bless them with heavenly blessings Lord we know from the scriptures we know from our history how blessed are these moments Lord we pray we might know this outpouring we had know the blessing of God upon us. Oh Lord, forgive us our sins. We repent of our wanderings. And Lord, we acknowledge uh, our shallowness as God's people oftentimes. Lord, we ask that our souls might be sobered and the Lord might be warmed and drawn at this very moment now. Draw us now, O oh Lord, we pray. Let us come to the word and gain from it many things according to thy grace and power and in the Holy Spirit and to the glory of God. Amen. Well, let's turn to the Psalm 139. Psalm 139. This great psalm of David. On the one hand, it's a very broad psalm. It speaks of omnipresence and omniscience. That God is present in all places, omnipresent. That God knows all things, omniscient. Yes, it's a broad psalm, all-encompassing psalm. On the other hand, it's a very personal psalm. That the Lord is always with me and knows all about me. And personal and intimate. It is this personal aspect especially I want to mention this evening an immediacy, the intimacy of this psalm. And particularly in these verses I've selected out of the psalm, verse 5 and verse 10, and we see these words. And laid thine hand upon me, or if I read the whole verse, uh, thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. And in verse 10, that was verse 5, and in verse 10, even there, shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. So we have three expressions and thoughts there, very similar to each other, but each one adding to the other. And the hand of God upon me, the hand of God leading me, and the hand of God holding me. Well, let's think of those things. And the hand upon me, uh, to begin with. Now we know, that God is a spirit and a great spirit and has no body and no hands and yet we often read in the scriptures and in this psalm in fact three times in this psalm the hands of God and that's because the scriptures bows down to our limitations and speaks to us in ways which we can relate to language which is powerful very relevant pertinent to our humanity and language which we understand. And so we see here the hand of God 
And the hand of God, if I can say first of all, is upon all things and all men. And we see that in this psalm. It speaks of his sovereignty. And yet, in these expressions before us, his hand upon us is more and much more than the general truth of the sovereignty and the providence of God, the general hand of God. Yes, of course, the hand of God is upon us because it's on everything. It's more than that. There's a personal touch, an intimacy suggested in these expressions and this expression, the hand of God upon me. Now, note the language in that verse 5. That was beset me behind and before. He's behind me and before me. In other words, he's all around me, we could say. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, that great preacher, uh, speaking of this verse, spoke of an ambush. But not an ambush to harm us and rob us, but an ambush of blessing. He's all around us. We're surrounded and he will bless us. Now these words, before, um, behind and before, that was beset me behind and before. Uh, if we took those words to mean the general omnipresence of God, which I think is more than that because it's so immediate, it's near me. Nevertheless, if we take for a moment those expressions to speak of the general omnipresence of God, this phrase, his hand upon me, goes further. It's as if he says, he's all around me, he's upon me. That's the power of this expression is personal involvement and a personal dealing of God with the soul. And this hand upon me speaks of many things. Uh, if we can think of the Christian and the story of the Christian and key moments in the Christian's life when the hand of God comes upon him. Like in the phrase there, and laid thine hand upon me. Uh, there is a moment here, it's a key moment. God lays his hand upon me. Uh, you could say that is general. No, the whole meaning of it suggests an action and, and something which is personal and particular. And laid thine hand upon me. Now, of course, we have to say the hand of God always has been and always will be upon the Christian. It has been upon him since eternity and will be so in all eternity. There is not a moment, it is true, when his hand is not upon me. And we thank God for that great truth. And there's something in that too, to glory in and thank God and to be encouraged about. And yet, there's something more here that, that we can speak of key moments when the hand of God is upon me. And key moments in the Christian's life. And leading up to our conversion, as Christians, when we became Christians. Now before a man becomes a Christian, he might be quite lawless and far from God, or certainly far from God in some way, whether in uh, religious formality, hypocrisy even, or far from God in the world. But let's take the man who is quite lawless, and he is in his heart anyway, whatever his circumstances, far from God. And it seems as if God's hand is not upon him. But this man has been chosen from eternity. And God's hand is upon him, although it seems as if not. All that's happening here is this, that God's hand is allowing him to go his way, to find out about himself and his failures. But then a time comes, the hand of God, which allowed him, then presses upon him. Maybe he restrains him and most certainly begins to show him his sin and the knowledge of sin. He begins to be troubled in his heart. This is the hand of God. Now he might well fight against it. And again, it might be the hand of God might seem to let him go, only once again to press upon him. And now perhaps show him his many sins and press a little harder on him, shall we say. And this might continue for some time, seemingly to let him go, then only to press upon him once again, until that blessed moment comes, when the hand will move decisively and bring him to Christ, bring the man to Jesus Christ, 
There he will see Christ on the cross, the Savior of sinners. He will feel his sin, but he will see the Savior dying for sinners. He will repent of his sin and go to the Savior and believe in the Savior. And his sin is taken away. Christ dies for him and saves him. He believes in this and in his heart he knows his sin has been dealt with. God has forgiven him in Jesus Christ. Yes, this hand is a saving hand. And this is a moment worthy of note, the hand of God in a moment of conversion. It's a special moment, a key moment. And as we just pause here for a moment, uh, it seems before he was converted that the hand of God was upon him in a secret way. But little by little, even in that time, it became revealed to him and he felt his power, this influence. The being of God became more and more uh, detailed and informed as God was leading him to the knowledge of the gospel. And then, of course, when he's saved and after he's saved, then the hand of God is more revealed and more prominent in his life. And then the Christian life, if we, if we can continue with the, the key moments uh, of this hand being laid upon us. Uh, it's a greater sense of reality perhaps here. Yeah? Uh, he's more aware of this hand. He's more responsive to God and God's hand is upon him and it's always upon him. And yet in his life we can speak of moments, moments in his life when God lays his hand upon him. We thank God for that. This is the involvement of God and the intervention of God in our lives. How good that is. How we need that intervention, involvement of God. Protection also and provision. And we trust moments of loving attention and blessed intimacy. The hand of God upon us. It's a lovely phrase, isn't it? Now we come to the other phrases, and this adds to the thought. It's similar in meaning, but adds to the thought of the hand of God upon us as we think of the hand leading and the hand holding. First of all, the hand leading. The hand of God leading me, leads me in guidance, and also speaks of direction here as he leads me to a place. The language of the hand leading is a, is a helpful image uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to explain to us uh, what God does in our lives, how he leads the Christian. Think of, of the actual hand. The hand might tell when to stop, or the hand might be lowered or waved to allow you to go through, uh, or the hand might, might point. Uh, all these things are helpful pictures to show us the hand leads us, the hand of God. How does he do that in reality? It is through his spirit and through his power and sovereignty and his providences and events and incidents in our lives. And there we find our way is blocked. The way has an obstruction, so we don't go that way. This is the hand of God leading us. In other times, the way might open out or there might be a time of conflict and confusion in your life and many doors and all those doors will close but one and that's the way you are to go and also the promptings of the heart not just the circumstances and the providences the arrangements of God around you but also the promptings within the heart God guides us and this leading there's much to it he keeps us from dangers. He also guides me through dangers. All those things. And in particular, along good paths. Oh, always. He guides along good paths. This brings to mind the words of Psalm 23. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And so he guides our hearts in obedience, in righteous ways, in, in obedience uh, to the ways of God. Uh, he does this through the reading of the word. There he guides our souls as we read. Uh, he 
shows us which way to go or what to do and how to obey these good paths. And so as we apply these things to our life, the Word of God and the preaching of the Word of God, that is how he takes us, takes us along the paths of righteousness. He gives indications to our lives. We follow it. Also, the fellowship of the saints is part of that. And these inward promptings. As we read the word, hey, he speaks to our hearts. His hand is upon us and he leads me. And within my heart, he leads me. In my mind, my soul, he leads me. And how patient, how gentle is his leading. When we go astray, he leads us back. When we stumble, he picks us up, ever and always in good ways. The patience, the long-suffering, the loving kindness of God. He is truly the shepherd of the sheep. But notice in that verse 10, that phrase, even there, and uh, uh, the, the, the verse before, if I can just quickly read uh, verse 9 if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea even there shall thy hand lead me so he leads us in some ex extremity and you might find you might find yourself in some kind of extremity maybe far from home how many through circumstances have been driven from their homes are far from home in some extremity or extremity of circumstance or both perhaps very often both it says even there my friend even there even there the Lord will lead you and guide you and then also remember we mentioned direction he has a long good path but also with direction and destination he always draws us to himself for the one thing, always closer to him. What a blessed thing that is. What a blessed God we have who wants us to draw near. We might feel very excluded from some friendship groups. Or you might feel lonely and friendless. But you have one who wishes your company and is always working at drawing you nearer to him. He desires your company. He desires our company. This is the very nature of our God. And so there is this direction always in our lives, closer, nearer to him. And also the sense of destination, that God is the end of the journey. And then we shall be with him, the everlasting togetherness. We might think of a couple, a man and a woman engaged to be married, and perhaps apart maybe, and living in different towns and cities and then the marriage day comes and they are together is that sense in our lives that we are betrothed to be married uh, our god and us uh, there is a sense of certainty about it uh, as you have in the old testament betrothal was uh, really contractual and as a marriage that's true but then when we are together with god there is that wonderful everlasting togetherness and this is the end of the journey god is the end of the journey and there is this blessed direction and good and heavenly destination of glory isn't this good that we are heading to god and every day brings us nearer to him well his hand holding me is the last part so we come to the final expression, his hand upon me, his hand leading me, and now we have his hand holding me. And we make note, it is here, the right hand, even there shall thy hand lead me. And here it adds something else, right, and thy right hand shall hold me. Now the right hand speaks of many things. The right, it was the right hand through which blessing was conferred, the right hand of blessing, as we know. So the Lord holds us with his right hand in blessing. The blessing of God, nothing better than that. And the right hand also was used to offer friendship and fellowship, 
uh, we have that tradition. Although now, of course, we don't shake hands, but we know the history of the right hand, shaking hands, and the right hand offered and connected uh, to fellowship and friendship. Fellowship and friendship. And so God holds us in friendship and fellowship, and his hand is upon us and holds us, holds us, where we are not able, thank God, to escape this blessed communion and this blessed union to him through Jesus Christ. And the right hand also represented goodness. It was the connection with the good, not the evil, the right hand, the right hand of righteousness, the scriptures mention. So God holds us, the Lord's hand holds us in righteousness. He holds me in the right hand of righteousness and of goodness and of cleanness and of the ways of the Lord. He holds me in good things. After myself, I would go away. He holds me in the Bible. He holds me in the things of the Lord. The right hand also is the strong hand and speaks of his strength and his power. So when we speak of the right hand of God, it speaks of his power and his authority as well. So he holds me in his mighty right hand and none can pluck me out. The strength of God. What a, what a place to be the mighty right hand of God. And in all these ways, he will hold me. And here perhaps there's a sense also of hold me when I'm afraid or when I'm shaken in life, in times of trial or under some threat. He will hold me. He will hold me in protection and help. Now, our human, human behavior shows the significance of this expression. Uh, as we think of this threat and trial, what do we do to each other when others are suffering and struggling? Well, some of us are more tactile and we might place a hand upon someone's arm or someone's shoulder in support and empathy. It's a communication. Uh, in case a person doesn't read your face or understand your words, the hand can add to that, the hand on the shoulder. But also the embrace, especially at times of great trial and sadness, we might embrace somebody in great sympathy. Isn't that the case? You might recall when speaking of this psalm a short while ago, I gave an example of how one godly elder in my father's church uh, placed his hand on my father's arm in a committee meeting, a difficult meeting, when others were accusing him and against him. And then in the heat of that moment, he would put his hand on my father's arm to hold him. In a sense, it's physical, partly, but also it was a spiritual uh, standing together. And so it is with the Lord here. And thy right hand shall hold me, speaks of the Lord, placing his hand upon our very frame, our human constitution. Yes, that's part of it but upon our souls. He does this in many, does this in many ways, uh, perhaps immediately in the heat of the moment or afterwards. And he settles us and places his hand, places his hand upon us. When we are shaken, he strengthens us. He does this in so many ways. It is a hand also of sympathy and says to us, I am with you. That's the case so often when he holds us He's saying to us, I am with you. And of course that comes with, comes with all the grace and strength of God when we know the Lord is saying that to us and holding us. So much which can be said about this holding. It's a lovely phrase that the, the right hand of God holds me. Holds me. Uh, it's a, it covers a whole spectrum of truths from our salvation uh, to our Christian living, to our perseverance. And indeed, uh, it speaks of all eternity. We are in his hand. Well, altogether, the hand of God is upon us and holds us and leads us. 
it is a wonderful trio of phrases. Let's take note of these words. Verse 5 and verse 10 of Psalm 139. The hand of God was upon me. The hand of God led me. The hand of God held me. All those things. And that is the case tonight, my dear friend. The hand of God is upon you and holds you. The hand of God will lead you and is leading you this very night. Think of the immediacy and the intimacy of that. That is the truth about you. Almighty God, then you. Isn't, there, isn't it a great truth? The hand of God is upon you, holds you and leads you. This is the grace and the wonder. It's an in, it is an integral part of our Christian faith. That we are saved from our sins. We believe in Christ. Even that is part of this hand of God. But of course, it is love. It is uh, relationship. And uh, Father and Son. It is God and his people. And these words represent the Christian faith and the loveliness of it. The hand of God. Oh, it's a phrase I like. I, I often speak about somebody before they're saved and saying, well, we pray the hand of God might be upon them. But then also, throughout life, we pray the same prayer. May God's hand be upon you throughout life. It is, of course, generally true, but oh, in moments of blessed moments, may you know the hand of God often pressing upon your life. And as we mentioned this morning, the very last expression of this psalm, in the way everlasting, we shall always know this hand of God upon us. Well, such things are blessings and such things we thank God for. Our souls, our vulnerable and our souls which are on their own, you could say. And yet we find this uh, great presence surrounding us and upon us. Isn't that what judgment and hell must be like? Uh, the lack of this and of being there isolated, alone, far from God and the sense of under the distance from God. This is the opposite, the closeness, the intimacy, the blessedness. If you are not the Lord's this evening, then indeed I pray, come to Christ and know the blessings found in him and this great, great truth of God and you. May you know God, my friend, God and you, and to know God all around you and upon you, before and behind you, and also upon you. And not to ambush you, to harm you, or to rob you, but to bless you. Well, we pray such things for you. Our Father and our God, we ask now for thy gracious blessing upon our hearts. May we know, O Lord, uh, these truths in our lives. They are true, but we pray. Oh, how blessed are these moments. Each phrase has its beauty. The hand of God upon me. The hand of God leading me. The hand of God holding me. Each one has its place. And, to, and all together, uh, they speak of the grace of God towards my soul. Right. And we thank thee, O Lord, through our Saviour. Amen. Well, we'll sing hymn 649. Hymn 649, this suitable hymn. Jesus, you lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. Hymn 649.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen.